seconds remaining. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ritmix Five Russian Dota 2 League loser bracket finals. Uh -huh. No Tide Hunter going up against Virtus Pro. This particular game we're gonna have VP taking up the dire side with first pick. And no Tide Hunter to the Radiant, and that's gonna leave them with second. Both we'll games this far. As this is the third game, we have seen the second pick team win, and I think that's kind of becoming a trend in the uh, current Dota game. At least something I've been noticing, of course, uh, confirmation bias. So. Ten seconds Who knows if it's actually real? Probably the guys over at Dota Academy who have detailed stats on at all the games being played, but a lot of teams are uh, sort of going for less conventional bands as of late, not trying to just go for the big four, as I kind of like to call them. With the Keeper Light, Nyx, Batrider, and finally... Keeper Light, Aww. Nyx, Batrider, who am I forgetting? Radiant Team Ban. Wisp, that's the last one, Wisp. Those being the four that we pretty much see banned out the most. And uh, Virtus Pro even showing that fact here, choosing to ban out both the Chen and the Lone Druid to start off here. Lo Chen and Lone Druid just heroes that no Titan Hunter runs very effectively. We've seen Aki's Chen really make a lot of difference in the way no Titan Hunter can play. And just having the Hand of God and also a uh, particularly skilled player with microing the Chen units can Five make a big remaining. deal in fights. <laughs> and now the final fight coming out from no Titan going to be the Nature's Prophet actually. So we are going to see three of what I like to call those big four making it through. We'll see which one Virtus Pro pick up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wisp coming out here. But if they pick up the Wisp, they leave Nyx and Batrider in the pool. And that's kind of a brutal lineup to be go setting yourself up to face. Uh, so I think it might be a little more likely they go for maybe the Batrider. It's it's hard to say. Ten seconds you know, I, don't, I wouldn't really want to play against either of those heroes in the pair. With the Nyx that could scout minutes. out for the Wisp ganks, of course Batrider could set up ganks as well. Radiant team With the pull, Batrider. and they're going to go Batrider at least for no time, or probably Nyx as a second. There we go. This is kind of how I expected the first three picks to go, but VP, they got no fear. They're going to go with the Chaos Knight. This combination, pretty powerful in terms of success Radiant in competitive team. games. And not a lineup that many teams are very comfortable facing. We'll see how No Tide Hunter deal with it here. What they're going to do is they're probably going to be facing that in their middle lane. And need to be prepared for that. Need to expect that they're going to run into the Chaos Knight Wisp there. And uh, Puck even now coming out for VP as their third pickup. So Puck, another hero that we kind of saw, particularly last night, for those of you who watched the defense grand finals, sort of become even first Five pick material. Remaining. Uh, for these teams, he was so highly valued by both Fnatic and Virtus Pro that we've seen him get picked up to start off these picking phases. However, he is going to be on the side of Virtus Pro right now, and they have a very, very strong ganking lineup with the IO Chaos Knight paired up with that Puck, who you know, presumably will pick up a Blink Dagger at some point. They're going to have a lot of initiation range, as well as just having. A lot of burst damage, disable, and the like. No Tide looking for their third and final pickup of this first picking phase. With both Bat and Nyx, their, gank, their lining up for ganking is also very strong. With these two lineups coming out, I'm kind of expecting to see a very, very aggressive game. Of course, uh, Wisp Chaos Knight, known for being able to teleport around the map, set up kills, wherever. But both Nyx and Batrider are also particularly good heroes for that. Of course, they don't have the relocate ability. They have to rely on things like TP scrolls and walking to get around. But still very useful for moving around the map. Vendetta gives you that stealth as well as the increased move speed. And then the backstab damage, it's pretty hard. <gasps> and uh, Batrider almost always going to have a blink there pretty team quickly. Bad. Typically we see Pat in the mid lane. And as of late, even more often just in the jungle where you can farm very quickly and kind of just abandon the offlane. Last pick card from No Tide, gonna be the Leshrac, so just going for a pretty aggressive support here. Leshrac with, of course, four abilities, all of them that do damage. <laughs> Which is not irrelevant as the game goes on. We'll see how No Tide decide to level him in this game. Most teams seem to have their own particular way they like to run the Leshrac. Some people 
get the lightning storm, some people don't get the lightning storm at all, ever. Some people get all of the spells. Uh, I think almost Five everyone seconds. gets Split Earth because it uh, turns out stuns are good, but other than that, there are options. Second ban phase is going to be well underway, however, for the Radiant time being. Enchantress coming out as the first ban from Verse Pro, so they want to take away the jungling supports that we know Aki is rather skilled with, but no tide don't take advantage of it maybe as often as other teams like to <sighs> talk about. <laughs> We see tons of those bands, maybe that's part of it, it's just that everyone's so used to No Tide. Like in their run, the uh, jungling supports that they get banned out before they're really willing to pick them up too often. And also the Lifestealer and Gyrocopter bands coming out from First Pro, so taking out some of those aggressive carries that are kind of favored in the current metagame. Though they're sort of falling out of maybe popularity a little bit all of a sudden as teams have started to experiment with all kinds of different carries. See Virtus Pro like to run Dragon Knight. As of late, Spectre has been picked up by both of these teams, First Pro and No Tide Hunter. No Tide have run Sniper, Phantom Assassin, Riki. It's kind of hard to just ban out every carry in the game when you're going up against No Tide Under. We'll see if they pick up an aggressive one here heading to the second pick phase. Darkseer, Undying, and Lina are going to be the bans from No Tide, so trying to limit their support options as well as take away the very powerful AoE and team fight. So as Laner in the form of Darkseer. Don't want to pair that up with a Wisp because that is incredibly tedious. To uh, play against, and then if they had gotten the Jakiro as well, uh, that'd be a lot of wombo y combo -y magic damage coming out from Virtus Pro. Get that vacuum off, you catch more than three heroes, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself to be in a huge advantage Five for a team fight. Remaining. Now, no tide, looking for their fourth pick. Reserve time. Uh, Magnus still in the pool, actually. I know. Seeing them, though, he's still in the pool. If they wanted to go that route and run Nyx as a support, as they often do, of course, S4 has played Nyx from time to time as well when he happens to get them, and they don't want to run him as a support in that particular game. Which means they do Ten have options. Remaining. If they leave the Magnus in the pool, that does open up Virtus Pro to picking it up. Five seconds they could also run some sort of other Six carry if they want to run double dual lanes, and I was kind of thinking this might come out as the carry when I was talking about No Tidehunter and Loda's really a range of heroes that he'll play. The one that was coming to mind is something they might pick up here. Faceless Void, not the most resilient to gank, he does have that time walk to try and uh, get away from a gank coming out from the Chaos Knight or the Wisp, but of course they're going to be faster in the Reality Rift. Probably just going to pull him back and then he'll be even, even more trouble than when he started. But he's somewhat resilient as a result of Five having that uh, backtrack ability. And having that faceless void ult with the Chronosphere can be a huge boon when Verse Pro have this really aggressive lineup that they're probably going to want to be taking team fights with. There's going to be a lot of ganking going on, of course, and they're probably going to be taking the team fights after pickoffs. But if they ever get caught in these Chronospheres, it could be bad news for heroes like the Wisp, who pretty much die immediately. Like the Jakiro, even to some extent the Puck. It's been quite some time since that Puck bug where you could uh, have phase shift on autocast while you were in Chronosphere and you would phase shift when you tried to attack you. Uh, good times, long time ago. Now pick number five, looking to come out from Virgis Pro here. It's going to kind of reveal how they want to lean this. You kind of expect Puck to be solo and Wisp and Chaos Knight to lay together in some fashion, and it looks like their last pick could be Enigma. Interesting to see how they're going to decide to run the Enigma. If they're going to send him into the offlane, or maybe just abandon the offlane, send him to the jungle, Puck mid, to run this tri lane. With Io, Chaos Knight, and Jakiro. We will see, but the last pickup going to be the Clockwork Goblin. Coming out from No Tide, so we'll probably get to see that in the hands of Emerald Bulldog, which means he'll be an offlane hero. Aki probably going to end up playing S4 going on Batrider, which means they're going to run the support, so maybe we'll see Emerald Bulldog in the mid lane. We will see how they decide to run this. If they run Clockwork Mid, just jungle the Batrider and run this tri -link defensively with Void, Leshrac, and Nyx Assassin. 
And if Virtus Pro are going to run a defensive trialing of their own, are going to go aggressive with their heroes. Their lineup pretty strong. Wisp, not the ideal seconds, in trialing. Of course, uh, just doesn't feel like he gets as much done as a lot Five of other trialing heroes remaining. can do. But when paired up with the Chaos Knight, of course, uh, it's always pretty good, no matter what happens. And we're going to have immediate pause come out from Illidan, because it looks like someone might be AFK, unfortunately. Alright, so he's going to get in now, and we can go over the players and their heroes for this particular game. On the Dire side, we're going to have Virtus Pro. NS, going to be on the Wisp, the invisible hero, who is composed entirely of particle effects, which of course don't go on when the game is paused. Crazy, going to be on the Puck, KSI on the Enigma, Smile on the Jakiro, and finally Illidan. Going to be playing the Chaos Knight, they're going to ask if you're ready to go once again, and no one from No Tide Hunter is responding. So, we're going to have a little bit of a delay of game here. Hopefully, they get the flag thrown out, get a little bit of a penalty. Alright, we're back to it now. No time to respond. Need a second, I guess. Okie dokie. And on the raid side, we got No Tide Hunter, so we're gonna have S4 taking up the barrier. Looks like he's going mid. Loda gonna be on the Faces Void, EGM. On the next assassin, Admiral Bulldog on the Rile Trap, Clockwork Goblin, and finally, Aki. Taking up that Lush Wreck. So it looks like both teams playing a range defensive tri lanes in their respect to safe lanes. Uh, gonna guarantee some farm for Loda, since he's gonna be mostly up against this off lane Enigma, who I can't imagine is gonna feel particularly safe. Running up against the tri lane, it's not really the position you want to be in. Can try and go for it though. It's not guaranteed to get destroyed. He can use those eye lines to sort of last hit from afar. As well as deny experience. And farm. From uh, Loda for as long as possible. Some napalm on Chaos Knight. He looks so silly with the napalm. The battle begins. Double damage. Double damage. It's interested to see exactly how good of a time Bulldog is going to have in this top lane. It should not be a particularly easy lane for him. He's running into this tri lane that's full of very, very powerful heroes. And he's playing as the Rattle Trap. Clockwork Goblin, who can't really. He got in lane, doesn't have an escape mechanism of any sort. Illidan going to uh, sit there and make sure that the creep wave doesn't get too out of his control. In the meantime, Puck looking to be the target for a gank coming out right away from these supports on the no time other side. They're going in. Orb going to be used by Crazy. There's the Impale. He's got Orbit level 1. He's going down. First blood goes the way of no time under EGM. Getting that first blood. And once you use that over the farm, you are in some trouble. My Wasn't expecting that gank, and so that's a good rotation coming out from the Titan, of course. Void, he feels completely safe down here. It just went Quelling Blade Tango, so we're going to be seeing a Midas Rush coming out of him. Almost certainly, he wants to get as big as he can as fast as possible. 
because he knows the pressure is going to be on from this lineup coming out from Virtus Pro. The team fight is basically insane in this particular game. Bulldog trying to do what he can now. There's a Jakiro forward the same task of making sure the Creep Eagle Arena stays where they want. And Clock, not going to have a good time this game. So Clockwork Gig basically completely destroyed this one. A little bit of why I'm surprised to see they sent S4 into the mid lane and didn't just jungle him. And uh, let the uh, Clockwork sit mid and get farm. It wouldn't have been a great matchup for the Clock. And I guess maybe it gives a little bit more advantage to Puck than they wanted to. But this Clock basically just going to be a dead hero. He hasn't gotten a single point of experience and it doesn't look like he's going to be getting any in the near future. Putting Cogs up and trying to hold the creep way back. Doesn't work particularly well when the opponents are on to your shenanigans. Bottle gonna get filled in the top river by as far as he finds that haste run. Supports have also made their way back down to the bottom lane and that means Aki down here in the slash rack has that point edict and they can start pressuring this tower right off the bat. Lord continue to show his fury with the battle fury. Getting some last hits as he's Dyer's doing it. Actually leading the last hit. Attack race at the moment, and the tier 1 tower the bottom lane already going to be having the glyph forced out. Lost about a quarter of its HP, some support coming down here in the form of the Enigma. So it's going to be able to try and pull the enemy creep wave back using those Eidolons. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Try his best, also maybe get some last hits. Do some rass, whatever, but the tier 1 Gonna be going down, and the deny comes out from Enigma. They just watch it happen. Loda tries to get the last hit, and uh, sets up the deny basically for KSI with those Eidolons. In the meantime, Clockwork, he's super dead in the top lane. He's got 124 experience though, so yeah. Hold on. Not a fun game for him. Crazy taking a lot of harass. In the mid lane from the Batrider. Looks like he got his bottle sent back. He's crowing. Or did he just go for boots? And wand. Hasn't actually picked the bottle up yet. Just wanted to get the wand as well as some boots to make sure he doesn't get absolutely destroyed by this Batrider. With that sticky napalm, he'll always have those wand chargers up now to try and rely on. And S4, gonna force a push into the tower it looks like, burning this creep wave off. Probably wants to go and get the rune, it is top, invis, he's gonna have to make his way there right away. And it's going to be able to. No one gonna be able to contest that from him, as he does have that haste rune. And he's heading top, not level 6 Radiant's yet, he's going in. Playbreak gonna come out, not gonna push Illidan the way he wanted it to. And that's gonna be the end of that kink S4. Not level 6, not gonna be able to set up anything big. Eidolons doing their best to kill off some ancients, it looks like, for the Enigma. Have to make sure to keep them separated, not doing it at the moment. It's going to make a lot more harass actually go on this Eidolon than it needed to, but it looks like he'll be able to finish it off nonetheless. Pops a center ward down, just to see if there's any sight over in that region from the attack hunter. Unfortunately from there is not. So it's mostly just gonna be a wasted sentry if they drop a word in the near future however. We'll still be there. <laughs> Level six is up on this bat rider in the mid lane, so he does have that last so we'll see if, where he tries to go or what he tries to get done with it. To some extent you expect it to be to the top lane, you wanna try and slow down the farm. Of that chaos knight as much as possible, but it's going to be a very hard game. Very difficult. There's two supports there, both with disables. Of course, uh, the tether going to be pretty good as a disable when you're pulling them. If you can get around the other side, just pop the tether. Stuns you when you have the guy lassoed. Ice path, good in its own right. Looks like they're diving this tower. Just tried to cut off the creep wave. Spirit's going to get thrown. Some homing missile gonna come off from Clockwork trying to do what it can as well. And the top tier one looking to be in some trouble, already down to half HP. And level two Clockwork. Top tower is under Not gonna be a one that's really gonna be able to keep this alive. Here comes the next creep wave. He's moving in. And Illidan. 
Leading the charge, he has boots, he has reality rift, he's tethered up. Gonna get the cogs off, only a one second star of Bulldog, but there's spirits flying through as well. Chronosphere coming out from Loda. Ice Path not gonna really catch on much of anything but S4. And does he have the lasso? No mana. Gonna try and pop it, needs to get it. Trying to throw Napalm as best he can. Gets the flame break, it's not gonna do much, and the Ice Path catches four from Smile. Gonna end that gank right off the bat. And so nothing really happening up in that top lane. A ton of rotation coming out from No Time here. They keep their tower alive, but they don't get the kills that they wanted. Crazy up to level six as well on his old puck. Dyer's Still pretty far behind the Bat Rider in terms of farm. Boots back going for seven hundred gold up as well as the basic boots. Probably just gonna see him rush the blink dagger, which is rather typical and a rather good idea, all things considered. Needs to be getting these ganks off, and you know, couldn't quite get it there. Threw the flame break out as far as he pretty much could, but that chaos knight already just having boots. Supposed to be uh, tethered up by the wisp. Too fast. Dyer's too furious. Is under attack. Smoke now coming out from chaos knight as well as the wisp heading down towards this bottom lane. Not sure who they're hoping to find. Probably Loda on the spaces void. He does have his Midas. But it looks like the one they're going to find is Aki. Oh ho, just barely not. Loda needs to get the hell out of Dodge. Just going to be farming behind his tower in the forest. Safe for the moment. Illidan going to fight a bat. Here we go. Stun on S4. Two seconds stun. Line's still going to land two, however. Black Hole can't come out from KSI. They might try and go for it here. Wisp already down. Oh, Wisp still alive. Black Hole gonna catch on too. As for trying to get in position, Wisp gonna get killed off by the Cog's push. Illidan now trapped in a kind of awkward spot. Two seconds stun on Batrider. Puck gets the Dream Coil on two supports. Looks like bat, uh, double kill for Bulldog getting Chaos Knight off. In the meantime, Puck able to finish off Aki. Loda dropping the Chrono Spear on two. And Puck gonna go down. EGM immediately pocket popping that spike carapace gets the kill with it. It's gonna be a three for one trade in favor of No Tide. But in the meantime, Smile on this Jakiro hanging out in the top lane pushes down. Tier one tower gets killed off by the creepway, so it gets some more gold. The way the rest of his team, instead of focusing it all on himself, which allows Chaos Knight to get a little bit of farm as well. Not irrelevant. Looks like he's going to be going for drums, has the treads, as well as a bracer up, so he's sitting pretty tanky. Already above a thousand HP, only nine minutes in. I guess Faceless Void is as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Of course, uh, Faceless Void it does have two levels on the Chaos Knight. And go just go back to farming the jungle, as well as uh, those levels just coming out from the Midas mostly. Kind of a big deal. Heaven Midas. He's gonna port up to the top lane, it looks like. Not sure what he's gonna go for next. Has those treads up. From time to time we do see him go for the Battle Fury to match his weapon. It's certainly still possible he could go that route. Uh, with the Midas, it gives him so much farming ability to just uh, run around the jungle, creep waves, whatever. Kill itself with Battle Fury, occasionally using Midas to get the gold as well as the experience. Bulldog up to level 6 now, those two kills in the jungle really helping him out. And. Okay. Wisp gank? No, wasn't even. The use of the relocate. Wasn't even noticing that S4 got himself killed in the lower river. Just not in a position you really want to be in. And Loda needs to be somewhat concerned. EGM, no mana up at the site moment. Looks like he's heading all the way back to base to refill. Yeah, as well as pick up his urn. Not quite. Oh, that wasn't the urn recipe. Nope, still a little off. Gonna have it shortly, though. In the meantime, Loda continuing to get that farm. Getting further and further ahead of this Chaos Knight. That's something they kind of need to deal with. Faceless Void, a little bit stronger of a carry as it goes in the late game than the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight, no slouch. However, gets a, if he gets enough base damage off those illusions, Really do a lot of damage and he can just push down towers, which is always relevant heading into late game. It looks like a mech gonna be the pickup from Enigma. 
Only the final recipe off, so sending my 800 gold away. Nothing really picked up by the Jigiro. The courier finally gonna respawn. What was on it? Nothing. So they got it. I didn't see where it died. Crazy, still nothing really picked up on his bat doing. Oh, almost says the blink dagger. Fully hit, died. Probably would have it up by now. Pops a DD rune to farm up in the jungle a little bit. Really wants to get that up before another engagement happens. As having access to that blink is kind of a huge boon in fights. Four staff making it even better, but that's going to be a little ways off. Very least, he needs to get the blink dagger first. And it looks like Loda Dyer's going big, going to go aggressive. Fix up that Borbit mask. We'll see if he makes it into the Mask of Madness right away. He just wants to uh, be involved in these team fights to start. Puck going to fight a regen rune in the lower river. And it looks like everyone posturing to go for a gank. Crazy, taking a lot of damage. There he goes. Clockwork gets the last hit with the hook shot. Worked him over good. Hello, boys. Now push coming out in the top lane, Illidan is up here, and it looks like Io going to make his way as well. This tier 2 tower in the top lane, already taking quite a bit of damage. Loda porting in, is he going for it? Chronosphere going to come off, Whisk going to tether himself, pull into the Chronosphere, probably not where you want to be. Lasso going to come off on the Whisk, keeping him in place, 3 seconds stun on S4, going to deal quite a bit, Emerald Bulldog gets the cogs out, that gets uh, forces off that kill. On IO, he actually gets pushed out of the cogs by Flame Break and then takes damage. S4 now getting hit. Two seconds stun. The Dream Core dropped as well. Loser Arm not going to do tons. S4 trying to stay out of range, going to get killed off by the Ice Path. From Jakira, here's the Black Hole catching on three. It's going to be Death of Loda and Admiral Bulldog EGM. And Vendetta now going to get a four second stun. He's down as well in Mitam Aki. In the mid lane, not able to get anything done. Try to put some pressure on that tier one, but he needs to be careful. There is no relocate from that wisp as well as him kind of our being all the way in the base. It's not gonna be able to do a ton about it. But they are gonna lose their tier two tower top. And that's the kind of thing you gotta be concerned about when you're no tires long off. They don't actually do any damage right now. Heroes like Clockwork, like Faceless Void, not known for really hitting very hard early on in the game. When they get through these extended slot fights with the enemy team, spells already being slung by both sides. It's kind of hard to say who's going to come on top. Except that you look at Chaos Knight and he hits really hard. 170 base damage is... that's a lot. And you look at other people, 79, 66, 95 is getting close from Faceless Void and he's a full level ahead of the Chaos Knight at the moment. Puck also has a ton of burst. Sun's going to come out out of S4. He wanted to go. Ice Path on him as well. There's a port coming in, this time from the Enigma. Try to do whatever he can. EGM. Going to get three seconds stunned while he's in Vendetta. It looks like he's probably going to lose his life. Running away. He's getting out of range. Is he out of the Sentry Ward? Looks like an S4 going to go down. EGM still in Vendetta. Might try and get something done. Amber Bulldog catching two of Cogs. Trying to run away now. Sun's going to miss. From Crazy Aki with the Edict going off. Not doing a ton of damage to heroes, however. And Bulldog, going to lose his life. EGM gets the stun off, it only lands on Crazy. Mana Burden going to come off on him on Smile. Leaves the Jakiro completely manaless, but real scrappy fight, and it ends up 2-0. Kill trade in favor of Virtus Pro in that mid lane. Now 96 is going to be the total kill score in favor of Virtus Pro. We're going to take a quick look at Experience Gold and see how the momentum of the game is going. Post that fight. And pretty much what you'd expect. Gold, 3k now in favor of Bruce Pro. Not a huge lead for uh, 15 minutes into the game. It is a lead, however. Which is relevant, and Experience looking about the same. So they've accumulated a little bit of a lead here. We've got smoke coming up from the Enigma as well as the Jakira. Hate to that bottom lane. Wisp is with. The Chaos Knight relocate off cooldown. Are they going to set up a gank here? And where is it going to be? Loda. Loda, you're about to be in a lot of trouble, my friend. Courier coming. It's bringing him a TP scroll. He's already getting silenced up. Here comes the relocate. Silence. Stuns. Loda, you're dead. 
And that's what you got to be worried about when you're going up against this Wisp Chaos Knight team. If you're, if the enemy team is able to smoke anything, Dyer's just get in range, spot you out, Dyer's you're probably dead because there's suddenly going to be two more heroes. And they can't really afford to lose Lodo right now. They need him farming. That's who they're going to have to lean on Dyer's heading into this late game. Now Aki going to get picked off by Wisp. Just uh, kind of trying to flee from that tower push. S4 to get the last hit on it. And still pretty far off of that 4 staff, which he really needs. He needs to be able to get in, get that lasso off, and get out very quickly. Pull someone out of position, set up these kills. S4 going to lose his life, it looks like. Dream Coral, as well as the Silence, and then Chaos Knight. A couple right clicks. Gives him the old cudgel. Right to the head, and he's dead. Here comes the Chronosphere, gonna land on three. Loda, try to do whatever damage he can, but it feels like he can't do enough. Illidan taking a lot of harass. KSI gonna get pulled into Kong's taking some damage. There's the black hole. Illidan still alive, get burned to death by the Batrider. He's gonna go down. But Void already lost his life as well. S4 taking some harass. Caught with that Maledict, throws the Flame Break out, not gonna lead do too much. EGM, try to get the last hit on KSI, the urn gonna finish him off. Ice Path flying through, gonna catch an Emerald Bulldog. Crazy still, basically full health. Gonna Blink it, gets the kill. On EGM, now Emerald Bulldog go down, triple kill. Crazy, Aki the only one left alive. Gonna dodge the split earth, doesn't want to get hit by the Maledict too much. And the Maledict gonna wear off, and that is the death. Ultra kill now for Crazy, full team wipe. And they only lose a couple heroes. The side of VP, 17 to 9. Now the kill scoring, no tide. Looking like they're in a pretty bad Radiant's position, this void. Is under attack. Just can't do enough. Doesn't hit hard enough in the midst of his Chronosphere. For Chronosphere to really be a useful spell, they have Radiant's heroes like the Nyx Assassin, like the Clockwork Goblin, who are typically wanting to be close to enemies to really do their spike damage. And Chronosphere prevents that. And of course, Cogs from Clockwork Goblin trying to do what they can, trying to split up these fights, break them up. So No Tide can try and take off the pigs, avoid all of the AoE. Coming out from VP, but when you get a big black hole off and it's just catching enemy heroes, and KSI, he's already got a couple. It's kind of rough, kind of rough to deal with, No Tide. You need to figure something out, come up with a plan of action here. They aren't going to be allowed to just farm for pro. Got to be feeling like they have the lead. And of course they do, 7,500 the experience. Only about 4k of the gold. But a uh, big experience lead is definitely good when you're running one of these. So we're really start ganking lineups. You can start forcing fights all over the place, continually keep that pressure on. And with heroes like the Puck, like the Enigma, the team fight potential coming out from them is just so strong. Roshan gonna go the way of Virtus Pro. That's really what was the story there. Wasn't talking too much about it, trying to go over the game state. A little bit more in depth, but Virtus Pro now pushing up this mid lane. Have all five heroes. Black Hole not gonna be for quite some time. Another minute. Dyer's top tower is under attack. But they have KS Knight ult. They have Puck ult. They don't have Jakar ult because he's got points in it. Tier three, one gonna go down. Maybe we're getting the last hit, giving him even more farm. Four staff up with the Jakiro. Looks like Dyer's no engage. Let's look at items. Admiral Bulldog trying to get that. Uh, Mechanism up, still a little off. Chaos Knight, he's up to 2,000 gold as well as a an Ogre Club. Kind of expecting to see BKB, but he can also just go for something like Assange, get more, even more damage. Surprised he hasn't picked up an armlet yet. With how aggressive they're playing and how much damage he's already doing. Ogre Club up by KSI as well, so we're going to see a BKB coming up on the Enigma, and the Tide don't really have anything to do about it at all. They could use the Bat Rider alt in Black Hole if he happens to be able to get in position to get in range for Bat Rider alt in Black Hole. Wisp, super dead. Super dead. Clockwork gonna get that kill without Illidan on the run. No port. There's Cogs. He's gonna pop the Phantasm. Spurs gonna do what it can. He pulls himself out of the Cogs with the Reality Rift. Trying to get away. Impale gonna land. But Radiance bottom tower has fallen. looks like they're just gonna back off. EGM try to fog that reality rift as long as possible. Illidan low on HP gets the urn off on him. Now it's gonna be his death. Gets one last chaos bolt off. It's gonna probably be the death of EGM Jakiro. Gain ice path that lands a couple. The Aegis is gonna return. 
And EGM super dead as well. So this far just a one for one trade as well as taking the Aegis, which isn't irrelevant. Getting that Aegis off of the Chaos Knight definitely going to be useful as the game goes on. The Mask of Madness is up on Faceless Void now, so he's going to farm even faster running around. As well as be able to do quite a bit more damage in those Chronospheres just because he's attacking faster. Get some opportune bashes off. The bash, of course, does double damage. Two enemies stuck in Chronosphere. Which does allow him to do quite a bit more. But he needs to pick something else up. And it's probably going to be BKB. Which doesn't really contribute to his damage that much. Doesn't really make him any stronger. We'll help for after the Chronosphere wears off. As well as uh, in case someone that has a stun like Shakiro. Manages to evade the Chronosphere. Drop an Ice Path through. He won't be getting stunned up by that. But... He's not going to be able to hit enough to uh, really go through the HP of this Chaos Knight. 1700 on him, 1200 on the Enigma, 1100 even on Jakiro. Just a lot of heroes with quite a bit of HP. As you look at his team, we got like a thousand on Nyx, like 1100 there, 900 on Leshrac. Their support's feeling a little bit squishier right now, seeing about the same kind of health as the Wisp. But of course, I was a strength hero, guys, so he should have tons of health. Because that's how Dodo moves. Gonna be pushing down this middle, or uh, bottom lane, excuse me, now, with the Virtus Pro lineup. Probably feel like they have the power to take these fights. No Phantasm, but they do have the Black Hole. Phantasm actually gonna be up for 5 seconds as well. Bottom Still no force staff attack. picked up there. A TP scroll coming the way of load up in the top lane. It's gonna try and sit top and farm for as long as possible. Looks like someone has picked up that and load up. So he's almost got that myth. He's bottom tower is under got the myth hammer, so he's trying to go for BKB. Only 1100 gold away. But in the meantime, I think VP looking to go for the smoking. I would be pretty surprised if they don't just end up going around trying to engage in this region. In between the towers. And they're gonna fight Aki. Already doomed. Or Impale not gonna land from anyone on EGM. He's trying to save the life of his ally. Flame Break on a fly through doesn't actually do anything, unfortunately. There is the backdoor region on the tower for the moment, and they're gonna have to go get their creep way back. No last track for 20 seconds though, and it's looking like that might be just enough for them to go for the kill. Probably would have liked to grab one or two more heroes. <laughs> Or just one of the bigger heroes in Leshrac. Leshrac, like, the easiest to kill in these fights. Has the least HP. But that tower gonna go down. There's the armlet up from Chaos Knight. He gets the last hit of the tower, so he's gonna be getting close to it. Probably, maybe a BKB? I don't know. Still has the Ogre Club. Might feel like he wants it. It's not gonna help against Void all that much, but... It does help somewhat against, like... The uh, Leshrac and the... Nyx Assassin. Could do a lot of magic first damage that he probably wants to avoid. Doesn't like getting burst down. Not gonna blame him for that. Looks like Puck has an ultimate orb coming his way. I'll sing on that gem, which is useful for trying to prevent EGM from really being able to initiate with that Nyx Assassin. Anytime Loda has that BKB at 20 gold. So he can try and get one last hit or he can just wait out his passive income to get the BKB. That means he'll have it for this next fight. Could make the difference, but still needs some damage. Still needs to start hitting hard. Needs to be able to kill these heroes off as fast as possible. Because this team not going to survive these extended fights the way for his pro are. The mech is done in clockwork now, which is going to sort of even the odds on that level. With mech up on both sides, Enigma doesn't have eyes at the moment for some reason. Just a part of the whole effect. There they are. Not down here though. Puck with the regen rune, going to be able to disengage, get basically completely full. As long as the regen rune doesn't pop too soon, I didn't really see when he bottled it. Silence! I'm out! <laughs> Blinking around being annoying. Saying things. Loda has that BKB. When are they going to want to engage? That might have been their opportunity just then. 
Chaos Knight and Io in the top lane, but they can come bottom very quickly with the relocate ability, and they're going for this gank on Loda now, it looks like. Here they go. No silence in time, Loda gonna be able to do a time walk away. Regeneration! Regeneration gets popped by Puck. I think it was just timed out. It's kind of forced to use it now. And that's where it has that force staff up now on his Batrider. Gonna want to try and set up these ganks. Get something big done. But it's not looking like they're able to at the moment. And this Batrider pick, this Nyx Assassin oh, yeah. pick. Heavy gankers. They're running into a gank line that's just really kind of outclassing them now. Let's take another look at Golden Experience. It's been a while. 7,500. The gold advantage for No Tide. Or, excuse me, for Bruce Pro. 11, approaching 12k. Gonna be the experience lead. Yep, there is a lot of vision up on the No Tide Hunter side of the map from Virtus Pro. We have this whole region going to be illuminated by that ward. And actually, some of the wards are dying now, but they have this whole space in here. And that makes the rain jungle super dangerous for Void to find uh, farm in. Wards, particularly good when you're uh, playing a hero like Chaos Knight Wisp combo, where you, if you spot someone out alone, they're just farming the jungle. That could be a hero that you're killing. And Void not particularly going to be able to get away from a tethered Chaos Knight. Smoke coming out. From them as well, we saw that smoke from No Tide Hunters appears to have failed since they all headed into the Dire Jungle, and of course, British Pro are not there, they're farming the Radiant Jungle. Which leaves S4 farming the Dire. Smoke ain't going to spot out EGM, he's trying to run away, getting as far as he can. Dream Coil gonna be dropped. Gonna just throw out that Impale, trying to do what he can, mana burn. He's not gonna survive. <laughs> Doesn't even pop the spike here, but that was on cooldown. Oof. Now the re relocate coming out on Loda. There's the Chronosphere. He's trying to do what? Deny a creep? Loda just denied the shit out of that creep. Now trying to kill off Illidan. He's gonna pop the BKB and just walk away. Well, I can't do a ton about it. Gonna get the lasso. Up on the Bat Raider. Now the Black Hole catching on S4. He's stuck directly in the center. He's super dead, but. Black Hole going to be wasted for just one. Aki trying to get out porting now. And there's not going to be any sort of stun to stop him. Ends up being a two for one trade. In favor of Virtus Pro. And they lose uh, just their Wisp, but they're able to kill off the Bat Raider. Unfortunately, they do spend quite a bit in terms of spells for that. The B, uh, black hole going to be down for quite some time. That was a BKB black hole from KSI. He uses his 10 second BKB charge. I believe Illidan also used his 10 second BKB charge. So it cost them kind of a lot, all things considered, to get those kills. And I don't know. The tide still oh, hanging on. Not sure what Virtus Pro are doing, why they're not trying to high ground. I guess they're going for Roshan now again, maybe? Thinking about it? Rocket going to, uh. Ho Rocket Flare going to scout this Roshan attempt out, it would appear. If they're actually going for it, it might just be a fake. The Rocket Flare gonna spot them up on the cliff, however, so they're gonna know that they're backed off. And VP just not willing to commit, it seems like. There's going to be the ult on the barrier pulling Illidan all the way in. He is dead. Faces Void. Gets the kill. That needs... Is that a buyback? KS Knight does have buyback. If he wants to go that route, but that's a big pick off to get. Taking down that KS Knight basically for free. Don't lose anyone for it. And now they're going to push up this bottom lane. They should be able to get this tier 2 tower. At least force out the buyback. If they want to take the chaos knight, there's the buyback. Dream Call gonna catch on three. Loda gonna get the Chronosphere off, however. Io and Illidan already taking a lot of damage. Illidan down to about half HP, trying to pop that Phantasm. Gonna maybe get it off now. There it goes. 
In the meantime, two heroes have already gone down in the no tire lineup, and they're not winning this fight. Three down. No black hole doesn't matter. The Chronosphere just doesn't do anything. Chaos Knight way too tanky. He can't. Loda cannot try and focus the Chaos Knight down. He's got a Maelstrom now, but he still doesn't hit very hard. It looks like he's probably picking up a Hyperstone. No, just gonna wait. Gonna farm. Probably need to keep the void or uh, buyback just in case he dies. If he goes down a void and doesn't have buyback, it's not gonna be a very pretty sight when he respawns in his base. So this Roche attempt coming out, let's take a look at items, see if anyone else picked something up while I wasn't paying attention. Doesn't look like... Ugh, why would snaking... Put that out in spectator chat, like... Who is he telling? Ghost Scepter is up on Wisp. And not a lot coming out. Pretty much from anywhere. Let's look at Kirk Gold, we have 3400 up on Pog, and that is relevant considering if we look at his inventory, <laughs> yeah, he had that ultimate orb, so that's a scythe of buys. So it's going to be a big push coming out, there's a big item pickup on the Puck, they have the Aegis, I'm not actually sure why Puck did that, but whatever. And we can get a big push coming out here now from the Verse Pro lineup, I'd be kind of surprised if they hesitated, didn't decide to pull the trigger. Considering that even with the lead that they have accumulated, Faceless Void, not a hero that you really want to get into fights with late game. Chronosphere, definitely one of those big game changing spells. And not one that you really want to risk. Eventually this Void will be able to get some farm. I mean, he is the most farmed hero on the map. He'll be able to get enough farm, rather. That he's just going to be too big, dealing a lot of damage, and Chaos Knight, even with that BKB, once he gets something like, I don't know, maybe, we'll see what he goes for next, it's just going to be like Butterfly, get more damage, attack speed, as well as that evasion, which is pretty useful when you're getting killed by Chaos Knight repeatedly, or if he finishes off the Mjolnir. But No Tide probably going to be forced back, now there's a push coming out of this bottom lane, the only, Dyer's top uh, I guess that's kind of a attack. split push at the moment, the only pushing mid can get wherever he needs to be, courtesy of his personal taxi. Laser taxi. Whee! Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And the tier 3 going to take a little bit of damage. <laughs> 24. But Lord can continue to farm. So the 4k gold. Hanging on to that buyback and rather wisely. But needs to be able to get some items up as well. Even the second life probably doesn't do all that much for him. They lose another team fight and it's on their doorstep, even with the buyback. He's not going to be in a good spot. Can't side for He's got some plate mail picked up. Four staff was up on Jakiro. as well as an ult, a point booster. And he's got something. It's going to be an eagle song, so he's going for that butterfly. I think this is definitely the right call. VP. Are they waiting too long? Are they too confident? Loda. Getting somewhat ganked. The Dream Call going to be dropped. The re relocate coming in. Illidan going to get caught by the... Uh, hookshot crazy going down in the chronosphere. The BKB, black hole coming off. There's the ult from Batrider, able to cancel off the BKB, but doesn't matter. Load hurry down, gonna buy back. Needs to get back in this fight. EGM taking a lot of damage. He's gonna lose his life as well. Three for one the trade. All they get down is Puck. Now Aki trying to port out gets caught by Chaos Bolt. That's his death. Triple kill for Illidan. The only one left alive. S4 as well as Loda who bought back S4. Gonna try and stop to push a little bit and then pour it out. He buys another TP scroll. It's not showing up as on cooldown because of the bugs. And Loda farming the top lane. Doing whatever he can. Needs to at least stall pushes. Can't have lanes. Pressuring him multiple sides. Needs to get that farm. Doesn't have does not have a TP scroll. Is he going to sell Midas to get it? 
Maybe pop it one last time and sell it, because he might need to get back. It looks like VP are actually backing off. They're concerned about Loda up here pushing, it seems. Yeah, he's going to sell his Midas, so that's the last use of Midas we're going to see from him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Sheepstick coming on him, and there's the relocate Loda. BKB, is it going to save you? He's trying to get away, TPing out, and he's gone. Able to survive. Regeneration. It is an early minus sell, but he is approaching basically six slots. I mean, he needs to be able to have these TPs if he's going to try and split push. His team doesn't have any way to really you know, assist with that. Almost has the money for the finishing off that butterfly. In the meantime, Batrider gets a pull on Wisp. It's going to be his death. Split Earth from Leshrick finishing him off. Not able to grab Illidan that time, but it does get another pick off that stalls for even longer. And no Tide Hunter trying to hang on, grasping. Everyone on their team kind of getting destroyed. The two supports sitting well below 200 gold per minute. Even Admiral Bulldog on that clockwork sitting below. There's Void's Butterfly. Makes sense for him to buy it now. Uh, can't save for buyback realistically anyways. As uh, buyback on cooldown for the next two and a half minutes. And by then he probably will have the gold. And having this Butterfly in case a fight does come on will be more useful than just saying there being man. I wish my buyback was off cooldown. Sure, what Loda's doing if he's expecting to get ganked and just trying to be prepared for that. He is almost on to five seconds for Haste. BKB charges. Trying to farm up in the jungle as best as possible. Probably see him finish this maelstrom into a mule near next. Try and get as much attack speed as possible. It's already hitting pretty hard. Just really hoping for a chain lightning there, it looks like. There we go. And Verse Pro. Just looking like they don't know what they need to be doing here. Maybe waiting out another Roshan. They have three minutes for that. Reality Rift just on creeps in the mid lane. Well, they're trying to get farm. He's got a heart picked up, so he's even harder to kill now. But I feel like, uh, kind of the position where, oh, Hagenim's Scepter pick up on Jakura as well as the Vitality Booster. Gonna get that big ass ma macro pyre out here. Super long line. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Tier two in the mid lane, taking a lot of damage. Line. Loda getting in position. He's smoked up. So they want to go in. Rocket Flare gonna spot out. Going Radiance on the Jakiro. Jakiro gonna lose his life. It looks like pretty quickly here. Yeah, there's that kill. EGM getting it. In the meantime, the rest of the fight. Chronosphere gonna get dropped. It's only on illusions. Doing nothing. Loda wasting Chronosphere. And now they don't have that ult, and the black hole already on cooldown. Loda. Four seconds done. Trying to get away. Trying to get away. Go to Time Walk still alive. His team sacrificing themselves to keep him alive. And he repays them by going with the Lotus Sphere. Going with the Lotus Sphere. That's going to be Tier 3 Tower in the mid lane gone. No Glyph up. Well, there's no Titan life. They already used it on the Tier 2 Tower. There's only two heroes up. Loda on the face of Void. No Chrono Sphere. Because he decided that those Phantasm Illusions must die. Melee Rex gone. Range Rex to follow. Rotating bottom. Here we go on the Tier 3 there. Illidan so tanky. No fear whatsoever. Getting that overcharge as well. They're blinking in, going on Lodeberg. Four seconds stun. Gonna get saved for the moment by Emerald Bulldog. Once again, trying to save his life. Loda gonna get the kill on KSI, it looks like. He's down. Time walk is there. Death of the Wisp. Illidan taking some damage. Three seconds stun. Loda once again. And Illidan going to lose his life. Destroyed. Waiting for that cog to disappear so we could start laying into him with that battle fury. Loda. Loda. 
Rough day, Loda. Rough day. But he's still keeping his team in it. They lose one set of racks, but that's not game over. It's not GG yet. He's still quite farmed on this face's void. Buyback is off cooldown this time. He's farming. He is continuing to farm. Gonna have that maelstrom in the near f or a Mjolnir rather in the near future. And then we'll see what he wants to go for. If they're gonna go on this tier two tower, it's pretty low on HP. Lord, just gonna finish it off. Quick, easy. Here we go, S4, gonna get the ult off on Smile. He's going down, Jakiro already dead, crazy trying to get out. BKB was popped by Lotus, so that's gonna be on cooldown. It is a five second charge, however. So not the longest cooldown. We'll be able to rely on that. EGM to get the last hit on Smile. That Jakiro. And eight, Roshan is back up, our no Tide Hunter. Gonna be cheeky little devils here, going for it. Emerald Bulldog scouting it out, Invis room gonna get picked up by Batrider. Do they have a gem up on anyone? Gem is up on the puck as well, actually, as a talisman of evasion. So it looks like we're going to be seeing a Heaven's Halberd puck. Not the puck we see very often. But definitely a useful item to have. Going up against the Faceless Void who is basically trying to carry his team to victory. And having rather little success. Roshan attempt coming out once again. VP, they they should know this is going on. Crazy. What are you doing? Farming Agents is going to get pulled. S4. And that's going to be the death of Crazy. Can he... Still alive with face shift, Staying alive? And he's down. Here comes the Black Hole on three. Setting up this kill, KSI Emerald Bulldog not able to get in range of time. Void gonna get the Chronosphere, trying to do whatever damage he can, hitting Illidan. Gonna get frozen up by that Ice Path. He's going down, Loda loses his life. Fists Void, the immediate buyback, Shakiro getting a double kill, Emerald Bulldog going down as well. Both buying back immediately. They need to get this Roshan. If they lose another Roshan, Illidan is too tanky. They're not gonna be able to take him down, they won't have the spells to go through two lives. Radiance top tower is under attack. This Roche Temp continuing. Wisp getting pushed on top of the cliff. He is quite dead. From that kill from S4. In the meantime, was gonna buy back. KSI going down as well from Clockwork with a pro less rocket player, looks like. He's gonna buy back. Illidan getting pulled by the Batrider ult. Ice Path landing on three. Loda trapped in cogs with a 3k HP. Guy yeah, Loda gonna try and get this kill on Wisp, not having success. Gets pulled up on top of the cliff by Illidan. Bulldog trying to get up here as well. They're getting in a fight, but Loda not winning that fight. Cog's gonna drop the ice path lands. Loda is dead. Killing spree. Gets another kill. Reality Rift says for trying to set up that kill. Jakiro chasing after him. He's gonna blink out. Dot 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 semicolon. Coming out from KSI. <laughs> oh my fucking god, coming out from Velot. The luck with that reality rift is insane. But Loda is dead. 70 seconds ages up. On Illidan on this Chaos Knight. The cheese is there as well. It looks like Smile and Jakiro are going to take it. And did he sell it? Did he use it? He's not at full mana, so I guess he was really low on mana. Doesn't heal like 1500? And here we go, the relocate gonna bring him right into the middle of the base. There's the Dream Call S4, he's down. Has the buyback, he's back in it. No buyback up on any other hero. Then the Chaos Knight round, the tier 3 towers in the bottom lane starting to take the damage. Glyph gonna pop out. Trying to do whatever they can, the overcharge. Too much. Illidan just laying in these racks. That's the second set of mana there. Still 20 seconds to Loda. Is back alive, and if he dies immediately upon respawn, he's got no buyback still. Has the Chronosphere. But Illidan now running up to that top lane in tier 3, already down to about 2 thirds HP. Here comes the Phantasm. And here we go. Melee Rex down. Range Rex down. No Tide Hunter. Watching their dreams. Of victory in this tournament. Going down. Oh, gonna get a triple kill. If only Loda had realized to do this the entire rest of the game. 
and gone for support, not trying to get in a fight with Illidan. You're not going to win the fight with Chaos Knight one-on-one. -on -one. You can kill off the supports and then go for the Chaos Knight. Rage Rex down, the Aegis is going to be popped. Smog going to lose his life, here comes the Aegis. Respawn, the Kong is going to keep him in for a second. And of course Reality Rift, going to just pull him out and actually pull the uh, Loda in. He'll lose his life again, but now they're fighting through Mega Creeps. Buyback is up on three heroes on the Virtus Pro lineup. No Tide. They gotta go for it right now. Here we go, up the mid lane. They're gonna have to win another big fight. And it's gonna be a 3v5. Uh, actually a 4v5, probably. Boom, there it goes. And looking at it, actually, by the time they get there through these mega creeps, it'll be a 5v5. Loto picked up a Crystalis. No TP scroll. Needs damage. With that Mask of Man, is trying to kill off these mega creeps as fast as possible. Spells coming out, trying to do everything they can. They need to go through. Take it all the way. Aki, all the way back in base, trying to defend. No Chronosphere from Loto, 10 seconds. They have to get the best engagement of their lives to take this fight right now. Smoke is up on several heroes. Sounds good caught on cra from Crazy. Sounds is up S4. He's stuck in Dream Call. Gets sided up now. Trying to get the kill on Batrider. Illidan getting kind of trolled by Emerald Bulldog there. He's keeping him from the rest of his fight for the moment. They're going on Illidan. Can they get this kill? But while the rest of his team is down, Lotus still has that Chronosphere. Probably gonna need to pop it and relocate, gonna pull Loda, or Illidan out. Here comes the black hole, Loda! In some trouble, Emerald Bulldog gonna cancel it with the hook shot, but Loda uses that Chronosphere. Uses that Chronosphere. It's too much, Loda, he's down. EGM porting it out. GG gonna get called, and TH. Ah, the they're gonna lose this game three and VP. Get their chance for revenge against Team Dignitas. Heading back into those grand finals. Middle under Once again, gonna face up against the guys who knocked them down in the winner bracket finals. Team Dignitas beat them in the best of three series 2 1. That means the grand finals. Maybe Dignitas versus VP, best of five. That will be going on Radiance later Middle today in just a few hours. So we will get to see that best of five match. Ample coverage will be provided, of course. And it looks like everyone's just going to hang out. The ancient, ancient going to go down. There's Mega Creeps. There's a ton of heroes. They're out farming. That Jakiro ult does so much damage. <laughs> but that's going to do it for this best of three. It was close. It was close. you got to give it to No Titan for trying. Just felt like Loda. Maybe he didn't get the best Chronospheres he needed. But at the same time, there was a lot relying on Loda. The rest of his team not really having any success anywhere on the map. And that's the kind of thing you're kind of be sort of expecting when you run into a Chaos Knight Wisp lineup. They're going to be all over the place. They're going to be setting up ganks. They're going to be pretty tanky with that Chaos Knight early on. Not be afraid to engage. And once again, my name is Kanaz. This is the final loser bracket match in the Russian Dota 2 League. VP gonna take it and move on to those grand finals to be played later today. Thanks for coming, and I will be back momentarily.